Jenny Haval. Innocence is kinky. Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new Jenny Haval album, Innocence is Kinky. Cal Chichester, spoken poem. Pistachio, pistachio. Green bean, green bean. Pap de Mali, I'm sweating. <laughs> Jenny Haval is a Norwegian singer-songwriter, and this is her sophomore full-length LP under her, her own name. Previous to the release of albums under the name Jenny Haval, she was putting out music under the name Rocket to the Sky. She's had other musical projects as well. She is also a writer, an occasional music reviewer, a jack of many traits of uh, 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 Jenny. Now Jenny's last full-length album, a few years ago, Viscera, does deliver what the album title suggests to an extent. It's kind of a singer-songwriter affair, very powerful emotive vocals, instrumentation that occasionally is climactic, growing and growing and growing as the song progresses, but still a little toned down in comparison to some of her Rocket to the Sky stuff. On this new LP of hers, Innocence is Kinky. And boy is it. Spank me. Jenny has gained a somewhat spontaneous edge. The songs on this new LP overall are shorter, follow a very linear, surprising, kind of jagged, unpredictable structure. There are more noises and effects employed on this new LP, and overall Jenny does cover a slightly larger genre base. Like on her previous LP, there is spoken word on this new album, but I would say Jenny relies on it a lot more. It's almost as if that eclectic, kind of confident side of her music that was very prevalent in Rocket to the Sky has returned on this new album, but with much more impressive production. Which is brought to the table by John Parrish, PJ Harvey's producer, who most recently worked with her on her fantastically huge album, Let England Shake. Now, if you're sad to see Jenny's more straightforward side go on this new album, Innocence is Kinky might not appeal to you exactly. There are a lot of tracks here that suffer from abrupt ends. There are songs right next to each other or motifs that have a completely different vibe than the song that they follow and the song that they precede. There are some sudden shifts in instrumentation as well that are interesting, but I can't help but feel like some of the discord that Jenny drums up on this LP is made to throw the listener off of the breadcrumb trail of very obvious influences. For one, P.J. Harvey, and a lot of her spoken word moments just breathe Kate Bush's 50 words for snow, which aren't bad influences to have or wear on your sleeve. It's just that as I listen to the album more and more, the novelty of how disjointed this album feels wears off, and then not much is, is left over in terms of tune or songwriting to keep me there and keep me engaged and keep me returning to this album. How disjointed this album is can sometimes feel like assembling a, a thousand piece puzzle, but without knowing, a tenth of the pieces on this album are missing. Still a great deal of the parts that Haval has left on this album are very enjoyable, and range from being hauntingly beautiful, to twisted, to even uncompromising. Interestingly enough, Haval's refusal to blend many of her ideas together on this album actually keeps her from being completely in the shadow of her influences. Most definitely on this album, the production brought by John Parrish is kind of a double-edged sword. As beautiful and as detailed and as textured and as well put together it is at many times on here, there are a ton of spots that just sound very much like instrumental flourishes from Let England Shake. And while Jenny, just like PJ on Let England Shake, has a strong narrative voice, there are a lot of parts where she instead comes off as very cerebral, abstract, sexual. A bit of spoken word on the opening track with this LP delves intimately into a late night session with some online porn. The synth and drum groove that pulsate against the spoken word and eventually roll the track into a full-blown song is met with a very sharp, jagged guitar lead that just lurches and creeps forward. Feels very nocturnal and kind of dirty, just like the words that Jenny is laying against this music. There are moments where she's just belting and calling out within her high range and other spots where she just really tones her voice down and coos very softly. Her range of pitch and emotion is really one of the most impressive things that this album has to offer. Especially when on this track and the song right after it, she's going through this weird thing with her voice where she's climbing up in pitch and then she's at the top of her range and her voice sounds like it's electronically synthesized and it sounds completely crazy. 
The song I Called, though, is a very sort of loud and catchy change of pace with its constant snare drum. It sort of paces itself out like it's a 60s pop tune with some guitar arpeggios that feel like they're coming from sort of the same field of range, but totally panned over in the right channel is this screaming, noisy, chaotic guitar playing. Not only is this totally just mucking up the vibe in a kind of exciting and noisy and just destructive way, but Jenny's voice goes from being very high and sort of bright to being completely tired and depressing, like she's having this sort of schizophrenic episode right in the middle of the song. On the other side of the spectrum, Renee Falconetti of Orleans on the next track has more of these cooed narrations matched up with sort of knife style vocal effects that call out very eerily. Emotionally, the vocals feel really passionate. They're backed up with some throbbing electronics, and while it is a really cool combination of influences and ideas that I applaud Jenny for, there's nothing here in terms of an interesting song structure or tune. The song really kind of feels like it bumbles around, just tossing together some concepts that might have been interesting. I do like the track Is There Anything On Me That Doesn't Speak because it does get more and more intense as it goes along. And the song Amphibious Androgynous is another very cohesive track on this album. It actually tells a pretty clear story from beginning to end with Jenny falling in love with this stick man, and literally he is made of sticks, and she's having a difficult time because of their mismatching physicalities loving him kissing him. A lot like how Kate Bush made love to that snowman on her last LP and then he melted and... I do think the last third of this album is the best material and the most consistent material that this LP does have to offer, but every time I listen to this album I didn't really come away anything more than sort of intrigued, but still wanting more and expecting that Jenny will go into more interesting territory into the future, as long as her production continues to stay this detailed and ambitious. I'm feeling a strong six to a light seven on this album. If you've given it a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Anthony Fantano, Jenny Haval, forever. <laughs>